Vassal. And I'm Melody. And today we're taking a look at Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time. Now this is a cooperative game in which you are raiding Professor Evil's Citadel of Time. Mansion. really feels like he just lives in a really nice house. <laughs> Does it feel like a Citadel of Time? I guess he has like switches and gears and stuff inside it. But it kind of looks like he, he uh, and Mr. Body are friends. But anyhow, um, it's a cooperative game. Let's take a look at it. in this game you are trying to rescue treasure there's a whole pile of treasures with the Atlantean space map the Eiffel bracelet da Vinci's notebook the Maya Ruby and so you're going to be trying to rescue these there's a couple here the Archean blaster the bus of Nefertiti and the alien relic here so those are the three treasures each treasure uh, that's been placed out randomly by drawing a room card to match the rooms uh, has a color on it that matches how much time you essentially have to find that. You have 40 minutes to find this, 45 minutes to find this, 30 minutes to find the alien relic. Those are all marked on the clock. Uh, Professor Evil himself is starting in the laboratory. Each other player is going to choose one of several of these characters that is here. So we have Nathan Goodspeed, the Master of Movements, Edward Wire, the Lord of the Gears, well, let's say I picked Destiny Bradshaw, Mistress of Randomness. Um, she's really random. Anyway, you get a deck of cards that you're going to take, and you're going to have these, and you're going to shuffle these, and at the beginning of each player's turn, they're going to draw two cards. By the way, the artwork on all the cards is unique to that person, but you'll draw two cards, and you read them to all the other players, and you're going to pick one of those cards that you're going to do at any point on your turn. Players also have three actions that they can do on their turn, they have their character token. They'll start outside the Citadel, but eventually move in with their actions. Now, what are the actions that you can do? Before I talk about actions, I want to talk about how this place is set up. You can see several of the rooms here. It kind of looks like Mr. Body's Mansion here from Clue. Each room has doors. If there's this black token and they all start like this, the doors are locked. Each room also might have some sort of trap in it, and these are either on or off. At the beginning of the game, six of them start on and six off, and they're all there randomly. To free a treasure, let's say for example, I wanna get the blaster here. This means all the blue and all the gray traps have to be off. Well, the blue trap is on here, and there's, there's a number one on it, which means there's only one, so that's the only one. This gray one is off, and it shows a three, so there's three of the saw blade traps. So this one is off, this one over here is on, and the third one is here, and it is also on, which isn't very useful at this point. So to rescue this treasure, I'm gonna have to turn this one off, this one off, and this one off. So on a player's turn, they have three actions. One of the actions, um, they come in through a window to move. So there's a window here, a window there, and a window all the way over on the other side of the house. When you come in, moving is one action. To move to another room is two actions, but you can't move through a closed door. So I might come in here one, open the door for two, and move here for three. If you're in a room with a switch, you can also turn that off for an action. You're not allowed in, to move into the room where Professor Evil is. But don't forget about your card. So let's say I'm, I'm playing Destiny Bradshaw here, and it says the professor can't walk around the castle this turn, but he can still use secret passages. So that's the one I want to play. When your turn's over, you're going to roll these three dice. Yeah, this isn't the good part of the game. This is when the bad guy goes. So first, you're going to look at the professor's movement. So he's either going to move one, two, or three spaces following the color of the door. He's going to use a secret passage here, which is when he's going to go to another room directly. And then this one here is basically just how far time moves, one or two spaces. So when he moves, when a professor moves, you're going to look at the room that he's in. So let's take a look, for example, right now he's in the laboratory. And you'll see there's three rugs here, green, blue, and red. So if the professor moves three green, he would move through here to here, because that's the green door into here. Everywhere he moves, he turns on all the things, and he locks all the doors that he goes through. He's going to move green again, so then he would move through here into this room, and then he would move green again, and the green exit to this room would be up here. So he would end in a ballroom turning on that switch. 
that would have been a very terrible move for us. If the professor gets a secret passage, he's going to move to the room with the treasure that matches that color die. So if I had rolled what I just did roll, which was the move and red uh, here, then the professor is going to look for the red treasure and immediately move there. So the professor can move around. Now sometimes the professor won't move at all. If you roll this number here, the 10 or the 5, instead the treasure that you roll that with is going to move counterclockwise back towards the time unit. See, when this time thing hits one of these colors, then that treasure is lost forever. And you're going to put that treasure up here at the top with the lost treasures. You need to save a treasure, which means you need to spend an action at a treasure spot, make sure all those switches are off, and then you can do that. Also, the professor can't be in that room, obviously. And if you save a treasure, you'll put it up here in the save treasure area. The game's pretty simple. Get four saved treasures win. If the professor gets four lost treasures, you all lose. Also, in the middle of the table, on the clock, whenever you pass one of these 15 marks, one player, and you decide who it is, can turn their card over, which gives them two special abilities. One that happens all the time. So this, for example, her, before you take actions, you can always unlock one door anywhere in the castle. That's amazing. And in addition, on your turn, you can flip this card and move one treasure marker counterclockwise 15 minutes to take three extra actions this turn. So then she's flipped back over, and you'll have to pass another 15 mark to get her ability back. Each person has a very different deck. For example, Nathan Goodspeed here is all about movement. Leroy Johnson's all about messing with the switches. Irene Elder messes with time. Destiny Bradshaw has the opportunity to do all sorts of random stuff, which could be amazing, but could also be bad. And together you will win as a group or lose. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the production of the game. I really think the production of this game is cool. The artwork is really well done. Um, the characters, did, I feel like they kind of mean something. Like Yeah, like uh, each person had their own ability and each one was important. Like they weren't, like they were all equal at the same time. Well, I don't mean just in how they, they looked. I feel like they, they had a character about them. Like the one woman is like, let's see what happens when we mess with it. <laughs> oh, and the other guy's like sneaking through really softly. I don't know. It felt like there was character behind them. The artwork on the board is really cool. My biggest complaint would be I wish they had gone just a little bit farther. Like for doors, I actually wish there had been like little stand-up doors mm -hmm. rather than the black sticks because it wasn't always easy to see them on the board. Yeah. And if there was one complaint I had about the movement, you look at the red, blue, green rugs in the room you're in, and there's another, there's another rug on the other side of the door, and sometimes I was confused, like, oh, they're going to move to the green door. Oh, no, wait, no, that's the red door. It wasn't a huge deal, but the cards are nice and big, and I really liked how the artwork in each card was specific to that character. You see them messing with stuff. Yeah. What did you think about the overall production? I thought it looked really nice. As soon as I opened the board, I was like, this looks really cool. And also like a game of Clue. But <laughs> I really liked the artwork. Um, I definitely liked how all the characters were different and had like their own artwork. And they just looked really cool. All right, cool. So we like how it looks. Mm -hmm. I like the theme, right? Hey, we need to go rescue the Ark of the Covenant and all the other things that this Professor Evil guy is stolen. It's okay to steal from a thief, I think. So what do well, you think they about... Well, first, you're just basically getting it back. Well, what if we're not... I, I guess we're good agents. I'm still not sure on that. Nick but Professor Evil. Well, <laughs> <laughs> point. Um, well, we weren't called like the good. Okay, anyhow. <laughs> now, the game itself, how hard is it? I found it really hard. <laughs> like, we did well, but also at the same time, just doing it is like, are we going to win? Like, it makes you feel like you're going to lose, that's yes. for sure. Um, and you can just. It comes down to when you roll those dice. You roll those mm -hmm. dice poorly, and he moves. Like, if he moves three spaces, that's just bad for everybody. Or if you have the mistress of randomness, and you have to make him do it twice. That's not fun either. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, the, yeah, but at least I'll say in that regard, the mistress of randomness had the choice to do that or not. Mm -hmm. Right? They can decide, am I going to, the mistress of randomness can roll a die. Well, yeah, but they could use the other card. Unless they're both super random yeah. like that. <laughs> And that is interesting, right? There, there is randomness to the game when you roll those dice. What did you think about the randomness? Um, I thought, um, at first I was like, okay, this is not going to be fun because it really felt like it was really based on the luck because you could be almost done 
and you just happen to roll poorly and it messes everything up that you're really working hard to do. So that part I didn't really like much about it, but it still, it was fun. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That, that's kind of where I'm at, too, right? There's definitely a lot of randomness in this. Mm -hmm. uh, but there, but the, the game is fun, especially in a teamwork style setting. Because I'm saying, oh, you're good at this, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go open these switches up in this room. And then on your turn, you run in and grab that. And let's all hope we don't roll red on the die. And <laughs> Professor Evil decides to just sneak in that room and close the, and lock those locks again. Mm -hmm. Because you need to get... The, all those traps in the house turned off. And that's such a pain because Professor Evil just keeps walking around turning them on. Now, yeah. oddly enough, he's not a smart guy, right? He's walking around and he's like, oh, this is off. I'll turn it back on. Oh, this door's open. I'll close it. You would think after a while he'd realize we were out in the house. <laughs> he sees you. He only just throws you out and that's it. That's true. <laughs> if he runs into you, he kicks you out of the house and then you got to come you back in. You can just in. come back back in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he's, he's a doddering old man, I suppose. Um, but it's, you know, the, the idea is fun. The, the, some of the clues give you 55 minutes, but then you have to have like um, half the switches in the house <laughs> turned off, or more than half. Mm -hmm. But it, it feels good, right? It feels like, hey, we communicate as a team. We work mm -hmm. together. If you win, it's like, wow, we beat these odds. And if, if you lose... Especially when you have an awesome comeback. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's neat. And as every time he captures a treasure, like, oh, what are we going to do? And it definitely falls into that category where everyone is talking the whole time. Okay, yes. let's do this, let's move here. What should we do? I'll do this and your turn, you do that. And I feel like that brings a story element to this. This is not a complex cooperative. It looks more complex than it is. It's, it's only hard because of the randomness. Honestly. Right, but I'm, I'm saying it's not complex. It's not hard to figure out. You move around, open doors, turn off switches, on switches, whatever. I feel like this is a family white game. It's the kind of game you could that should be sold at Toys R Us mm -hmm. and things like that that people could get and play, and I think they would have a lot of fun. In yeah. fact, this should, I wouldn't, this could be in the Clue universe. That would work for me. <laughs> so definitely for families, I'd recommend this one. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cooperative games out there that sometimes feel soulless. This one has a good theme and a story behind it. Yeah, I really liked it because it really did feel like you're going in, trying to un, like, um, turn off the traps, get the treasure, and then like get the treasure. Well, you're not really getting the treasure out, but like you're getting the treasure. It was like, that's really cool. <laughs> and the special abilities feel really special. The characters mm -hmm. are really different. And you, when you're a special ability, like, open all the locks in one room. That's pretty good, mm -hmm. right? You know, or the one character I showed you, right? She can move three extra actions. That's a huge thing. She goes in, opens the door, does this, switches a switch, and it says the treasure, and everyone claps because what a great move that is. And it is great. Um, so uh, what would you rate this game? I'd say like a seven. Ah. Like, I really liked it, but like it's a little bit lower because of all like the dice rolling and luck. But it was really fun, though. Yeah, I'm right there with Melody. This is a solid seven, a lot of fun. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this. That is Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time. I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Melody. And you've been watching Double Trouble. Boom! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.